So edge might be a, it might be a hard edge. It might be the edge of the property. Um, of course, when you mention edge round, as I explained earlier, if you have an ecosystem and then you have an overlapping ecosystem for whatever reason it might be, it might be because there's a, a particular microclimate. It might be that you have a stream passing through this area there. So what tends to happen is you have all the species that uh, are in this area uh, will actually are in that area also and all the species in that area are in that area also so you have a double up an overlap of the species but then you'll also have a third a third group of um, plants animals or third community that's actually that's where they live so you can get I'm not gonna say tripling but you get an intensification of complexity when you get into into these areas of overlap or edge now the other concept with edge so there's a standard pond right and we know that um, overlap between ecosystems is a particularly rich place so here we've got a terrestrial environment surrounding a pond so we've got this we've probably got a uh, an intensification of um, the various species and biological activity there so how could we make it even more intense? If we've, got, if we've got an edge that does that, we want more edge, don't we? So we, the edge would, would then be castellated or lobed. The effect too is that now we're, we're possibly even adding in greater variations within that ecosystem that all this conglomeration of ecosystems that we're getting, you know, we're getting actually different environments that are you know, bounded by two bits of water. Um, so yeah, so we use edge to increase surface area. Of course, sometimes we can use, because remember we talked about concentrating or mitigating. The other thing is, what's the, what's the shape that encloses the most amount of area for the smallest surface area? So a circle has the least surface area for the volume that it encases. So say you had a uh, box of the same volume as this circle. Now the box would be probably like that. Hang on. For the same volume as the circle, the box will have more surface area. I haven't drawn it well, but the box will have more surface area. So a curve is the easiest way to enclose the most amount of space with the least amount of material, which is probably why people talk about you know, curved houses being, being efficient as part of it. Now, um, so here we try to intensify edge, but here we're trying to reduce edge. So what would be, why would we be trying to reduce edge but having a big, a big area, enclose the biggest area? Space limitation. Space limitation, yeah, but circles don't really fit in well, do they, we, if you've got tight space, unless it's a circular space. What's another reason? Think about... Um, What's one of the main gardening tasks that everyone hates? Weeding. Weeding. So if that's your garden, ignore the box, but if that's your garden, the circular thing, you've got the most garden encased, uh, enclosed for the least amount of area that you have to weed because most of the weeds come in from the edge. So you've enclosed the greatest amount of space and yet you've got the least perimeter to actually have to patrol. And of course, the classic that everyone gets excited about is the mandala garden shape. So that is circles within circles. So there, you know, we've got uh, the mandala comes out and you've got a circled lobe and there might be another circled lobe and another circled lobe and another circled lobe. I actually did that one not too bad, didn't I? Well, <laughs> and then of course this is the uh, this is the edge of the garden, like that. So, if you do the calculations, you get the most amount of garden space for the least amount of edge. Another interesting thing to note that uh, with edge is that the implications of of that are that the smaller an object is, the greater the proportion of its surface area for its size. So a general rule that around that is that um, small animals 
will lose their heat more easily than large animals. It stands to reason because they're, they're, there's more surface area to radiate for their size. But the implications that are there when you're choosing species for different climates that uh, larger animals, so larger chickens or whatever, in colder climates are better and you, go f you tend to go for smaller chickens because they'll lose more body, body heat than, than the larger ones in the, in the tropics.